I'm with Dr. Stephen Flam. He's professor of medicine at the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine, also an active member of the American Association for the Study of Liver Disease. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, what in your mind are the main topics for DDW this year? Well, the ASLD always has an active program at DDW. Uh, this year, they have a hepatology update, a year in review on Saturday, which touches on many of the recent advances in the field of hepatology. Should be an excellent program. And then later in the, uh, during the meeting, there are the usual clinical and basic science research presented at plenary sessions and smaller topic sessions. Mm -hmm. There are the usual state-of-the-art discussions where updated treatment evaluation and therapeutic management strategies are discussed and then there are clinical symposia which are specialized units where certain topics are touched on with great detail. When it comes to the hot topics in liver disease, uh, what topics are we talking about? Well there are a lot of areas of active research in hepatology but the really hot area is dealing with chronic hepatitis C virus infection. Mm -hmm. There were two new drugs that were recently approved for therapy, but there are many more forthcoming. In fact, by the end of the year, there should be more revolutionary therapies approved for treatment of hepatitis C. And there are discussions, clinical research presentations that will be discussed at this meeting showing the very exciting results with those regimens. Oh, wow, because you hear a lot about these um, Direct action antivirals, is that a, a main topic here today? That's exactly right. There will be presentations at this meeting with all oral direct acting antiviral agent regimens that cure genotype 1, the most common type of hepatitis C in the United States. How short regimens are we talking about? Uh, there's one presentation at the meeting that actually discusses an eight-week regimen, wow. but most of the regimens are 12 weeks that will be discussed. Um, any new guidelines would you predict that might be released this week in terms of liver disease? I don't think any new guidelines will be released this week. Uh, for hepatitis C though, guidelines were released in late January by the AASLD and the Infectious Disease Society of America. They were a joint guideline. Uh, these guidelines are being updated rapidly now because of the rapid progress in therapy of hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. And I suspect in the relatively near future there will be updates. I don't think anything this week though. Besides hepatitis C, any other liver diseases that strike you as very topical right now? Yeah, there's a lot. First of all, liver transplantation is always an active area of research and there are presentations at this meeting that deal with liver transplantation. Pediatrics is always an, uh, a topic that requires additional investigation. Fatty liver, the most common liver disease in the United States nowadays, there are presentations dealing with, with fatty liver. And then, you know, a smattering of other topics in the usuals in liver I know disease. there is so much information. What do you want the takeaways to be for, for the thousands of people here? Well, I think the general takeaway is that there is a lot of research. We have a lot of work to do in certain areas of hepatology. Uh, and fortunately, there's basic and clinical research presented at this meeting that will help build a foundation. But the clinical take home message from this meeting is the rapid advance in therapy of hepatitis C. And it's gonna be a challenge for the practitioners out there to learn all these new regimens and how to use them mm -hmm. uh, and implement them in their practice. Well, the onus on them to detect these patients, I would think is gonna be greater than ever. Absolutely. Uh, not discussed so much at this meeting, but the CDC last year made new screening guidelines. It called uh, birth cohort screening guidelines where everybody, everybody born between the age of 19, uh, between the year of 1945 and 1965 is supposed to be screened with one blood test of hepatitis C wow. uh, because the rate of people that have hepatitis C born during those years is very high. So that needs to be implemented and gain traction. And then we'll identify the hep C patients, then we can use then these we got new the medicines. Treatments. Absolutely. It's a very exciting time. Dr. Flam, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you really so much for having it. me. Yeah, and um, if you want more information about DDW and the events this week, you can follow us on our blog or follow us on Twitter. The hashtag is DDW14.